Pepperon Fuchs continues to expand its product portfolio of ICE-1 modules. Hello and welcome to the introduction on IO Hubs with IOLink Interface. My name is Donia Silgalis and I'm the product manager responsible for this product. We will focus on the following list of topics. IO Hub connectivity, review of the ICE-1 portfolio, key product features, and I will finish with a live demonstration connecting the IO Hub using the integrated web server and the IO Link configuration tool. Pepperon Fuchs offers a number of IO Link sensor technologies, such as photoelectric light barriers, light grids, distance sensors, ultrasonic sensors, and inductive position measurement systems. With this launch, this IOLink portfolio now includes IO hubs with IOLink interface. The current IO hubs only support 16 discrete input devices. Therefore, no digital outputs or no IOLink devices can be connected to the ports on the hub. IO hubs come with a fully encapsulated pressure casted zinc enclosure. Further technical details on the hubs are shown on this slide. Note, an A-coded M12 connector is available for power and data transfer to an IO-Link master. The wide operating temperature range of minus 20 degrees Celsius to 70 degrees Celsius enables modules to be used in harsh industrial environments. Now, let's take a minute and review the ICE-1 family of modules. The first introduction of ICE-1 modules occurred in 2016 with the fixed discrete I.O. modules. The modules came in two different I.O. counts. The C1 module enabled control functionality on the module. Next the I.O. Link Master got released in 2017. Now we introduce the newest module in the ICE-1 family, the I.O. Hub. Now let's take a closer look at some of the notable features of the IO hubs. Eight ports are available, making it possible to connect up to 128 digital input sensors to a single IO link master. This dramatically simplifies and reduces wiring of digital sensors to a PLC. The A coded M12 connector, which we spoke about earlier, simplifies wiring by enabling data transfer and power on a single connection from the hub to the IO link master. Each port of the IO hub supports extended configurations for input filter times and signal extension. Configurable signal extension between 0 to 3 milliseconds to help deal with fast sensor signal. Both parameters help to prevent transfer of inaccurate data to the PLC. Additional configuration of logic level is available on each port of the IO hub, noted as active high or active low. This enables one to prioritize the order in which the signals from the ports 1 through 8 are transmitted back to the PLC. Standard configuration is 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, and so forth. Alternate configuration may be 1A, 2A, 1B, 2B. Finally, IO hubs support the latest IOLink specification version 1.1. This specification supports the highest possible data transfer rate of 230.4 kbaud. Furthermore, the IO hubs support data storage functionality, making it possible to recover saved parameter data of the hub in case of device failure. Let's briefly review the decoder ring for the module. Most notable is the ICA, which stands for Industrial Communication Accessory. For the most part, the naming standard of an ICE-1 module has been maintained. Finally, I wanted to conduct two live demonstrations of connecting the IO hub to the IO link master. The slide stages the setup I have arranged in front of me. IP addresses have been pre-assigned to both my computer 
and the IO-Link master. The IO-Hub is connected to port 1 of the IO-Link master. In the first demonstration, I will show what is displayed in the integrated web server. Since a PLC is not connected in this arrangement, we will configure port 1 of the IO-Link master using the integrated web server. In the second demonstration, I will show you what can be configured and monitored as we connect using the IO-Link configuration tool. Hopefully, both these demonstrations will summarize the notable parameters and features available on the IO-Hub. Having reviewed the desktop arrangement, let's conduct our first live demonstration. We'll launch a web browser and enter the IP address of our IO-Link master. This may vary based on the settings of your IO-Link master. As the integrated web server appears, nothing is configured on the, on the web page. We will use the force mode capabilities in order to configure our port for IO-Link. Our login credentials are admin and private. And as our configuration capability appears, we configure our port 1 for IO-Link where our hub is connected. Note the solid green LED on port 1. As we click on the port option, we can drill down further on seeing further details on our IO-Link hub. One last thing to note is the inductive sensor connected to port 1 of our IO hub. As we place something in front of our sensor, we see our input data toggle on and off and off. In the second demonstration, I want to review some of the configurable parameters available with the IO hub. Here we will use the IO link configuration tool in order to display these parameters. As we click on to search for our master and recognize it, we click on going online and check to see what is connected to our IO-Link master. Here the recognition is made on port 1 for the IO-Hub. The IO-Link configuration tool provides a number of tabs available to us on the IO-Link device. In this case, one tab I wanted to note and review with you is the parameter tab. In the IO-Link configuration tool, the three notable parameters are as follows. The logic channel configuration being active high or low. The filter channel configuration being arranged over milliseconds and the signal extension for each port being enabled or disabled. I am excited to continue expanding the Pepperell & Fuchs ICE-1 product portfolio with the IO hubs with IO Link. Have a great day and thanks again for viewing the video. Don't forget to like and share our YouTube channel.